Hello and welcome to one of the Motoring Podcast First Drives, recorded during the SMMT test day at Millbrook in May 2017. This time I'm driving a Toyota CHR, powered by a 1.2 litre petrol engine, uh, mated to a 6 speed manual gearbox. The car I drove was the Excel specification, uh, the more luxury focused of the two upper trim levels. The alternative being Dynamic, which is a little bit dearer, and Icon, which is a couple of thousand pounds cheaper. I only had the car for about 25 minutes, so here, straight off the block, are my initial thoughts. Um, starting off the day, uh, and I am in a Toyota CHR. Now, I know that these divide people's opinions because the styling is quite striking. Um, it's quite challenging uh, for some folk. There is a lot of it, a uh, lot of it going on. Um, but all the same, I like it. But I, I drive a Veyron and stuff, so uh, so so what what do you expect? I, I actually quite like cars with with challenging styling. Um, I've had this this 1.2 CHR, uh, so 1.2 manual, uh, as opposed to the hybrid. And I've taken it out and I've been around the the hill course once. So I was going to go around a second time and just have a little bit of a chat as I go. So let's get it started. The dashboard in here is is really very cool. There aren't that many buttons but there is a massive um, a massive touch screen right in the middle. Uh, up on the top here it's got fake leather and stitching and stuff. It feels really high quality. There's this dark dark brown textured finish on on the doors. It's it's just plastic, but it looks really expensive. It looks really cool. It's got this kind of diamond, diamond pokey pattern uh, going on uh, in there. The armrest here is dark, dark brown uh, as well. But I'm not really doing it justice with some of these descriptions, and that's about to fall off the windscreen. So I'll put that down. And there's this nice perforated leather in the seats in the front and the back. The back I haven't sat in. It doesn't look particularly big, but it it looks bigger than a Duke, which is a, a similar vehicle. In this this kind of this kind of range, um, let's have a go. See how we get on. Now, as I press this, it's a nice animation comes up in there. Another one up on there. Um, the aircon is probably going to blow like mad. Um, a little bit of me says tough um, because it is blooming hot already. This touch screen is quite cool. I've just there's an electronic part brake, and I've I had trouble getting it on. I think and off earlier on, but I'm sure it's practice. The touch screen's quite cool, getting the S confirm that I'm not going to do anything silly. There it is, it's on the map. Um, the dials are nice and clear. There are an awful lot of green lights telling me different systems are on. I'm gonna try and work out what those are and um, and I'll try and put them in as a caption or something on, on here. Um, yeah, uh, heaty seats. Dual zone air conditioning, all the media stuff you could want. There's there's USB sockets and three and a half mil jacks and all sorts of stuff down there. Little phone cubby, two deep cup holders, more power sockets in here. The boot's quite wide, quite square. It's got curry hooks, Andrew, um, and all these kind of things. So it's a super practical uh, little car. But uh, enough waffling. Let's get driving and see what we can do. That's that. I will, I'm so unused to the idea of an electric park brake. I will get there eventually. Make sure nobody's going to run me over. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, down the bottom of the hill here we have the added challenge of trying not to get run over by supercars. So we'll see how we do. There's a speedo and there's a rev counter and there's a nice big That's my bag sliding around, and there's a nice big, uh, nice big speed display in the middle of the computer, which I quite like. Um, it's a 1.2 litre turbo engine. I think I said that uh, turbo petrol engine, and it's quite tiny. I mean, it's not a big car, really. Um, oh, I've done my usual trick and going over speed bumps and avoid those. But it seems to pull along quite happily. It's, it's kind of strange, and it does. I mean, there is no, there is no lag, but but you can sort of feel it kick in a little bit. Now, this is a mill. This Range Rover in front is Millbrook labelled, so I don't really want to get in trouble. 
trouble for overtaking him. These very tight turns. This is one of the trickiest courses around here, of course. There's no overtaking. What's nice is you can tell that there's an awful lot of tech in this car. You can really feel the tech, but it's not intrusive. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't sort of over over ping and bing its way in. I, mean, I don't know. If, I think lane departure warning on, but I haven't actually kicked it in yet. Let's go for the overtake. Let the Porsche behind come out as well. Uh, but no, this drives really well. I mean, it's the the power stick obviously is electric, um, so it's not you know it, it's not a 911. But it's for a small uh, for a sort of small SUV type thing. This really does handle quite nicely. There is there is very little body roll. Uh, really very little body roll. You would expect a car like this to wallow a bit, to be, um, I mean, I'm really gumming it around there, um, to wallow a bit, to, to sort of lollop a bit, uh, uh, like I did on the first time around, and this time, no, it, it actually gets you, once you're used to it, you realise, um, where the, where the limits are, that's a blind crest, uh, where the limits are, um, and they're actually quite high, then, then you can you can really enjoy this car. I mean, this is this hill road is a simulation of sort of alpine hills and roads. 